Our next story is stranger than science fiction. It concerns the creation of a synthetic embryo. What's that? It's basically a structure that mimics real life human embryos. Only that it's made entirely of synthetic or stem cells without using sperm, eggs, even a womb. Sounds bonkers, right? Perhaps even dystopian. But what if I told you tonight that synthetic embryos are coming for us? All thanks to Israel. Scientists in Israel have created a quote-unquote incredibly human-like artificial embryo model. They are calling it a breakthrough. A scientific milestone of sorts. But is it really? Let's find out. First things first. Who's behind the development of this embryo? A group of researchers at the Wiseman Institute of Science, one of Israel's premier institutes for natural and exact sciences. What have they done? They have made artificial models of human embryos from stem cells that were generated in a lab. Is this embryo human? No. And it can't even become one. It's made up of a cluster of cells that cannot grow into a person. And why is that? Because it could not be successfully implanted into a womb. Meaning, it could not grow into a fetus because it wasn't placed inside a womb, neither real or artificial. That said, this artificial embryo model had all the elements of a 14-day human embryo. The cells it is made up of also showed the ability to grow into tissues. Now look at this image. It shows what a 14-day human embryo looks like. The yellow bit is a yolk sac that would become the embryo itself. The blue part is a membrane, a thin sheet of tissue which protects the embryo. And the part in pink basically shows the cell that will become the placenta, the structure that provides oxygen and nutrients to a growing baby. Look at this image now. This is what the synthetic embryo looked like. Isn't it eerily similar to what the human embryo looked like? It has the outer lower that could have become the placenta. It has the hormones used in pregnancy tests. Plus, researchers say it also has a yolk sac, membranes and external tissues, although we can't seem to spot it. Now, as fascinating as all of this might sound, the question is, why was this synthetic embryo developed in the first place? I mean, what was the purpose of this? Aren't there already too many human embryos every year? Well, the scientists say their only aim was to understand the black box of human development. This is basically a period of pregnancy which occurs 16 to 17 days after fertilization and it's called the black box because scientific knowledge about this period or this process is extremely limited. No one knows much about what happens during this period so these researchers decided to find for themselves and what they discovered is yet to be made public. Another important question that pops up Will these embryos be restricted to scientific research only? Or will they also be used to give birth to a human being? The researchers say that would be unethical, illegal, even impossible. Because such synthetic embryos might not survive inside a human womb. What about a, what about a synthetic womb then? Will they survive in that? Look at this report. Scientists in the Netherlands say that they are just 10 years away from developing an artificial womb. What will they do with it? save the lives of premature babies. Premature birth is said to be the biggest cause of death among newborns. Dutch researchers say that an artificial womb could solve this problem. We wonder if these artificial wombs will also be used to grow artificial embryos. Some self-proclaimed experts say they should be. Take this man for instance. His name is Vitalik Buterin. He's a co-founder of Ethereum. He wants to replace pregnant women with synthetic wombs. A proposal that has incurred the wrath of many feminists. Vitalik disagrees with them. He, said, he says such wombs would do more good for women than bad. He shared this graph to justify his views. It pointed out how women's earnings drop significantly after having a child. But for men, they remain unchanged. Synthetic wombs, according to him, can remove the high burden of pregnancy and reduce income disparity. Interestingly, a lot of women support the idea. Some say they would love to have more options and prioritize their health. Some others say that bearing children the exact same way women have forever is just deeply regressive. But wouldn't that be the same as growing species in a lab? I mean, is letting machines replicate every human element of life a good idea? Should there be a limit to the kind of scientific research we are allowed to do? especially when it comes to the creation of life. 
If the last four years have taught us anything, it's this. Defying the laws of nature, messing with nature doesn't really end well. The last time someone did so, we ended up with a pandemic that claimed millions of lives. Think about it. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.